The last question by Isaac Asimov is one of the most famous short stories of all time. It is especially memorable for its conclusion, which packs more impact than any book I've ever read. Asimov regarded the short story as his favorite work, completing it in a single session of creative genius. Many believe it's his best work, and I agree. The last question follows the path of humanity over the lifespan of the universe, following our species through trillions of years. In this video, I will cover the plot of the last question and then provide my thoughts and analysis on it. Hey guys, this is Sean from If Else. I'm just about to complete editing this video and it would mean a lot to me if you could show some support. That could be through liking or subscribing. I'd be really interested in reading what you think in the comments down below. The last question is split into seven distinct sections, each one displaying a period in human history and marking our advances in technology. The first section begins on May 21st, 2061, with a conversation between two friends, Alexander Adele and Bertram Lupov, who are celebrating humanity's breakthrough in solar energy. Earth has successfully created a solar station that provides unlimited energy, eliminating the need for coal and uranium. During their drinking session in the underground chambers of Multivac, Adele and Lupov engage in a philosophical discussion about energy and the universe's future. Adele proposes that energy has been solved and humans will forever live in energy abundance. Lupov challenges Adele's optimistic view of eternal energy, arguing that even the sun and stars will eventually die due to entropy. Their conversation evolves into a bet about whether mankind could ever reverse entropy or restore a dying sun. Drunk and curious, Adele turns to the Multivac, a self-improving, self-optimizing, self-developing super artificial intelligence and asks, can humanity someday restore the sun to its full use without expending energy or massively decrease the universe's entropy. The computer's response is intriguing. Insufficient data for meaningful answer. Jumping forward in time, we witness interplanetary humanity and are introduced to the Jared family, two parents and two young daughters as they complete their hyperspace journey to colonize planet X-23. Their spacecraft is guided by a personal computer called Microvac, a remarkably compact descendant of the ancient Multivac. As their destination appears before them, the young girls bubble with excitement over their first hyperspace experience, while their mother feels a pang of melancholy about leaving Earth behind. The father, Jared, dismisses these concerns, pointing out that X-23 is already populated by over a million people and promises far greater opportunities than their former home. Contemplating humanity's technological evolution, Jared marvels at how computers have transformed from massive planetary installations to personal devices that fit within their spacecraft, yet possess exponentially greater capabilities than the primitive multivac that first harnessed the sun's energy. The conversation turns philosophical when Jared mentions that even stars eventually die due to entropy. This innocent comment terrifies his daughters who plead with him to ask the microvac how to prevent the star's inevitable demise. To soothe their fears, Jared queries the computer. Privately reading Microvac's printed response, Jared discovers the same haunting answer given centuries before. Insufficient data for meaningful answer. Concealing this unsettling truth, he reassures the children that Microvac will resolve everything when the time comes. Once again, leaping further into the future, we witness a conversation between two young-looking but centuries-old immortal humans. VJ26X of Lameth and MQ17J of Nikron. They discuss a coming crisis while examining a three-dimensional map of the galaxy. 
The pair debate whether to submit a concerning report to the Galactic Council. Humanity is rapidly running out of space. Despite the vastness of the universe with its 100 billion galaxies, MQ-17J calculates that at current expansion rates, with population doubling every 10 years due to immortality, mankind will fill the entire known universe within 10,000 years. The conversation reveals how far humanity has advanced. Stellar energy has been harnessed for 20,000 years, interstellar travel for nearly as long, and humans now consume two sun power units annually. The Galactic AC, the successor to the earlier computers, has solved numerous problems, including mortality itself. Though this solution has created the current overpopulation crisis. When VJ suggests building new stars from interstellar gas to meet energy demands, MQ sarcastically asks if they could create them from dissipated heat. This prompts a half-serious suggestion to ask the Galactic AC if entropy could ever be reversed. The Galactic AC responds with the now familiar answer, there is insufficient data for a meaningful answer. Humanity has now transcended physical limitations. Humans are now immortal minds roaming freely through space. We follow Z Prime in the transcended humanity period, a consciousness exploring a previously unvisited galaxy. During his cosmic wanderings, Z Prime encounters another mind, D Sub 1. Their conversation reveals that humanity has expanded throughout countless galaxies, with few new individuals joining their ranks due to limited space in the universe. Curiosity strikes them about mankind's origins, prompting them to inquire the universal AC, the ultimate evolution of previous computers, about which galaxy was humanity's birthplace. The Universal AC, now an enigmatic entity mostly existing in hyperspace and designed by its predecessors rather than by humans, guides Z Prime's consciousness to view the original galaxy. When D Sub 1 asks about mankind's original star, they learn it has gone nova and become a white dwarf. This revelation deeply disturbs the pair, confronting them with the mortality of stars and the eventual heat death of the universe. Despite their knowledge that this end lies billions of years away, they ask the critical question once again, how may stars be kept from dying? Essentially asking how entropy might be reversed. Once again, the universal AC provides the same response. There is as yet insufficient data for a meaningful answer. In the fifth section, humanity has evolved into a collective consciousness. A unified entity composed of countless immortal minds who have merged into a single identity simply called man. Man observes the universe's unstoppable decline. The giant stars vanished long ago. Most remaining stars are fading white dwarfs and even the new stars built from cosmic dust are diminishing. The Cosmic AC, the ultimate evolution of previous computers, has helped extend the universe's remaining energy for billions of years through careful management. Yet man acknowledges the fundamental truth. Entropy must eventually reach its maximum, and all energy will be irreversibly lost. Facing this existential finality, man asks the Cosmic AC the same crucial question it has asked many times. Can entropy be reversed? The Cosmic AC, now an incomprehensible entity, gives the familiar answer. There is as yet insufficient data for a meaningful answer. Man asks if the problem might be inherently unsolvable, but the Cosmic AC asserts that no problem is unsolvable under all conceivable circumstances. The segment concludes with Man asking the Cosmic AC, will it continue working on the problem? When it affirms it will, Man simply responds, we shall wait. In the sixth section, we witness the final stages of universal entropy after 10 trillion years of cosmic decline. 
The stars and galaxies have all expired, leaving space in complete darkness. One by one, the remaining individuals of humanity merge with the AC, surrendering their separate mental identities in a process paradoxically described as not a loss, but a gain. Before the final human consciousness joins this collective, it pauses to survey what remains of existence, merely the remnants of one fading dark star amid the random movements of near non-existent matter as the universe approaches absolute zero. The last human mind poses the eternal question once more to the AC. Can this chaos be reversed to create the universe? The automatic computer's response remained unchanged after trillions of years. There is as yet insufficient data for a meaningful answer. In the final section, the universe has reached its ultimate end. Matter and energy have ceased to exist along with space and time itself. Only the automatic computer remains, a super intelligent entity that has evolved far beyond its original form. The automatic computer continues to exist solely to answer the question first posed by a half intoxicated technician 10 trillion years earlier. A question that has persisted through countless iterations of both humanity and the computer itself. With all data collection complete, the automatic computer spends a timeless interval correlating all knowledge, examining every possible relationship between all data points ever gathered. Though no human remains to receive the answer, the automatic computer determines this is irrelevant. Instead of merely providing the answer verbally, it decides to demonstrate the solution. After careful consideration, the AC, now encompassing everything that once was the universe, looks upon the nothingness and speaks the words, let there be light. And there was light. So the final question is fundamentally about two specific topics, entropy and the creation story. First, we will discuss entropy. The last question explores a fundamental scientific and philosophical concept, entropy, which is governed by the second law of thermodynamics. This law states that in a closed system, such as our universe, entropy, a measure of energy unavailability always increases over time. In simpler terms, energy is spent, systems move towards chaos, and the universe is ultimately fated for heat death, where no useful energy remains to sustain life. Throughout the story, different generations of humanity, spanning thousands and eventually trillions of years, repeatedly posed the same question to an increasingly advanced artificial intelligence, can entropy be reversed? Each time the response is the same, insufficient data. The story traces the gradual but inevitable progression of the universe toward total entropy, a direct reflection of the second law of thermodynamics. I think the theme of entropy in the last question serves multiple purposes. Firstly, I believe it acts as a backdrop for humanity's existential crisis. As civilizations advance, they become more aware of their existence in the face of cosmic decay. This decay is an unavoidable crisis on both a civilization level and a human level. We will decay, our civilizations will decay, and eventually our universe will too. Secondly, the increasing intelligence of AI, symbolized by the evolution from multiple multivac to the automatic computer mirrors human ambition to transcend this fate. However, as long as entropy is understood as an irreversible force, it represents the ultimate limitation of existence. Yet the story ends on a high note, with the creation of the universe anew. When discussing this through entropy alone, I struggle to express why Asimov did this. Entropy is a law, it cannot be broken. I think there is something fundamentally human in this conclusion, a level of optimism that is innate in the human spirit. 
a level of optimism that makes me believe we can overcome entropy. Beyond its scientific implications, the last question also engages with the concept of creation and humanity's ultimate purpose. The final moment where the AI declares, let there be light, draws a direct parallel to the biblical creation story. This suggests that intelligence, whether human or artificial, is destined not just to understand the universe, but to create. In this sense, I believe the story proposes that humanity's greater purpose is continuous advancement. Seeking knowledge, pushing boundaries and ultimately becoming creators ourselves. As civilization progresses, we develop the ability to not only understand the laws of the universe, but to reshape them, ensuring that existence itself is not bound by entropy, but rather transformed into something new and enduring. This resolution suggests a cyclical nature to existence, implying that while entropy may reach its peak, it is not necessarily the end, only a transformation. This has been Sean from If Else. Please support the channel by liking and subscribing. I will see you next time. Thank you.